Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to Overclocking. So almost all new computer aficionados, new technicians, one of the first things they want to learn is, Eli, how do I overclock my PC? So the basic idea behind overclocking is that you make either your CPU or your RAM run faster than the, uh, the specifications say it's supposed to run. So essentially, if you have, let's say, a 3 gigahertz processor, you force that processor to, in fact, run at 3.2 or 3.3 gigahertz. If you have RAM running at whatever speed it's running at, you force that RAM to run faster. So the idea with overclocking is basically you buy a less expensive CPU and then you force it to run at the same speed of a more expensive processor. So again, as with many things when I am talking about technology, this is one of those things that was really, 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 really amazing 13 years ago. And as I say, Nowadays, um, it is about as relevant, I would argue, as defragmenting your hard drive. So this is a real technology, and it has more like had a real important use, but it is just one of those things that, that is still in the popular mind, but isn't so relevant anymore. So basically, the, the main concept behind overclocking is that when uh, Intel or when AMD was manufacturing or when they do manufacture CPUs and RAM and all of that, you know, basically all of these CPUs are coming down the same assembly line. Well, one of the issues that comes up whenever you do any mass manufacturing of anything is what do you do about defects? What do you do about CPUs that don't run as fast as they're supposed to? So essentially what, what, what Intel did in, in their, 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 their testing cycle is is they decided they would try to manufacture all their CPUs at a certain speed. So 1 gigahertz, 300 megahertz, 3 gigahertz, whatever that speed was. Well, when the, the processors actually get manufactured due to small defects, due to issues in the material, when the CPUs come out the other side of the factory, they don't all necessarily match the specifications that Intel or the CPU manufacturer was first going for. So they, they, they put the CPU to, to go through the tests, and instead of running at, at 3 gigahertz stably, it can only run at 2.2 gigahertz stably. So basically, initially, this was a three supposed to be a three gigahertz processor. It only runs at 2.2 gigahertz, so it gets stamped as a 2.2 gigahertz processor, and it goes out the door. Well, again, whenever we are thinking about dealing with mass manufacture commodity items, one of the most important things about commodity items is you have to standardize the products that you're selling. So Intel doesn't want to sell a, a 2.1 gigahertz processor and a 2.2 gigahertz processor and a 2.22 gigahertz processor and a 2.357 gigahertz processor, right? That, that just gets confusing. They want to sell a 2 gigahertz processor and a 2.2 gigahertz processor and a 3 gigahertz processor and a 3.4 gigahertz processor. Even though it may not seem like they've standardized very well. Even a company like Intel with a zillion different processors still has a modicum of, of standardization. So the issue is, is that when the CPUs or when the components go out of the, the get tested, right? The issue is, is let's say that Intel wants to create two gigahertz processors and they want to create three gigahertz processors. Well, you send the, the CPU through the manufacturing process, you test it, and then when it tests, it tests at 2.5 gigahertz. So that's not 3 gigahertz, so it can't go out as a premium processor. But, you're all, but Intel's only selling 2 gigahertz processors. So what happens is that processor gets stamped at 2 gigahertz, and that is what the system thinks it has when it goes into your system. Now if you do something called overclocking, what you can find out is that that CPU can actually run at 2.5 gigahertz, and therefore you can make it run faster um, than, than, than you have been told, than the specification that, that you have received. So that's the idea with, with overclocking. 
So how overclocking works in the real world is basically in order to do overclocking, your motherboard has to support overclocking and the CPU itself or the memory has to support uh, overclocking. So one of the things that Intel has been pushing now is what are called locked CPUs. So these CPUs are actually locked so you can't overclock them. So you have to get a, a CPU that is actually unlocked. The theory what happens with the overclocking process is basically you buy the motherboard, you install a piece of software that will allow you to do the overclocking, and you have the CPU. Then you can either manually or automatically try to overclock the processor. So what happens is if, if you manually try to overclock the processor, you get a whole bunch of, of different configurations within the software, and then essentially you manually, manually muck around with it. Basically, it's a lot of trial and error, and it's one of the reasons that I don't mess with overclocking a lot. Because essentially what you do is you go, okay, it's a 2 gigahertz processor, let's kick it up to 2.1 gigahertz. And their system seems to work fine. So you go, okay, let's go, go up to like 2.3 gigahertz. And then your system literally crashes. And then you reboot the system, and then you go, okay, let's try 2.2 gigahertz, see if that works. And see what you're manually doing is trying to figure out the, 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 the point that your computer crashes. The automatic process is essentially that, just automatic. So what the overclocking program will do is it will start to, to put more and more and more and more and more and more load on your CPU or your RAM all the way up until your computer crashes. And then essentially, when your computer crashes, you know where that limit is. Now, my issue with overclocking is, again, I am from the day and age when overclocking was a really big deal, right? I am from the day and age when we had 133 megahertz CPUs and 200 megahertz CPUs and 300 megahertz CPUs, right? So back in the day, if you could overclock your processor, if you had a 300 megahertz uh, processor and you can overclock it to 400 megahertz wow right I mean we're, 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 we're like literally talking about a third of the power of your smartphone right but if you had a 300 megahertz processor and you could overclock it to 400 megahertz basically for free you were getting um, a, a third more power out of that CPU. And again, at that point in time, CPUs were the bottleneck. Actually, hard drives weren't the bottleneck back then. It was the CPU. Because, you know, whatever you were trying to do, it would always peg out the CPU because they were so slow. So it was a worthwhile thing. Processors were exceptionally expensive, and frankly, no matter how fast a processor you bought back then, you still wanted it to run faster. So even if you drop $2,000 on the processor alone, you would probably overclock that sucker just because a $2,000 processor was still pretty pathetically slow. As I talk about, things have moved on, guys. It's now 2013. It's not 2003 anymore. The processors that are out nowadays, like, like in my lab computer, it has an i7 3.4 gigahertz, you know, quad core processor on it that, um, the bottleneck simply is not the processor. Um, again, as I've talked about, you know, when we talk about bottlenecks in systems, bottlenecks is, is, is the slowest point in the system. Nowadays, frankly, it's your hard drive. Your hard drive is what is most likely the bottleneck for your system. So as long as you buy like an i7 processor or a decent processor, even if you even if you do overclock it, it's probably not going to do a whole hell of a lot for you, right? Because because your hard drive is, is is the same as it always been. And I may be wrong, but I don't believe you can overclock hard drives. You're, you're, you're kind of just stuck there. So one of the issues that I have with overclocking is because, remember, when Intel sells you a product, right? Intel is a tier one vendor. AMD is a tier one vendor. These are, these, are, these, are, these are manufacturers that really, 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 really care about their brand, right? Intel doesn't want massive problems with their processors because, because they want you to come to them always. So when they stamp 2 gigahertz or 3 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz on that processor, they're basically guaranteeing you that that processor will work as advertised. Now, out of all the years I have done tech support, the processor itself has never been the issue. Seriously, in, in all the years I've done tech support, 
it's never been, oh, the Intel processor died. It's always been the motherboard or the hard drive or the power supply or the graphic card or anything other than the processor. I mean, even you, you guys saw. When, when was the last time it was actually the processor that you had to swap out? So, so the issue that I have with, with overclocking, since we already have uh, CPUs that are so powerful, is essentially what you're doing is you're adding instability to your system when you probably don't need it when you probably don't need to. Because, you know, if you're playing a video game or if, you, if you're like me and you're doing intensive graphic design, you know, the, uh, when I do uh, my videos, I mean, I'm, I'm encoding 1080p high definition video. That takes a lot of CPU power. Well, if I peg out the CPU and it's set at 3.4 gigahertz as Intel has said it should, then, then my encoding is just going to process along and it's going to chug along for four or five or six hours because it's really painful encoding process. The problem is, is if you overclock, you don't know how long that overclocking is going to remain stable. Can you run it at 3. Point whatever, 6 gigahertz for an hour, for two, for five? So for somebody like me, the problem is, is if I overclock, it adds a little bit of stability, it may run fine pegging out for an hour or two hours or three hours, but at the four hour mark, my system's just gonna shut itself off because something went, right? Well, if it takes five hours to process one of my videos and it shuts itself off at the, at, at the, at the four hour mark, I have just lost four hours of time to have to reboot my system and, and, and go through all that. So, so my argument with overclocking nowadays, again, is much like defragmenting hard drives, is, is it really worth the time and energy or should you just throw down another $25 or $50 to buy a little bit better processor? Again, like I say, with defragmenting hard drives, sure you can defragment a three terabyte hard drive. <laughs> and how many days is that going to take you? It's just not worth it anymore. Again, I would argue the same point is true with overclocking that, um, that yes, you can do it. And a lot of people like to do it. It's a cool thing to do, but, but really, seriously, at the end of the day, is it worth it? So if you want to be doing overclocking, though, basically, again, what you're going to need is you're going to need a motherboard that supports overclocking. You're going to need a processor that is unlocked that supports overclocking. And then you need the software to actually do the, the overclocking. So let's go over to the computer for a second, just so I can show you a couple things um, and kind of show you a little bit about how this works. So again, so if you want to overclock, you can overclock Intel processors and you can overclock AMD processors. I'm just at the Intel website because, you know, they're the premier processor. But basically here we can see it talks about overclocking Intel processors. So if you want to know more about this whole thing, um, as with many manufacturers, Intel will give you a lot of information and probably a lot of it's over your head. But if we scroll down here, the more, most important thing I want you to understand about this whole unlocking process is this whole idea of that the processor has to be unlocked. Um, at least as I recall, this didn't used to be an issue. You could do it to almost any processor, but apparently now Intel is locking a, a lot of their processors, so you simply can't overclock them even if you wanted to. Basically, if you have a processor, Intel processor, that you can overclock, you can scroll down and it will give you a lot of information about how to uh, do the overclocking down here. So it talks about how you can go into BIOS if you have it, or what I'm going to show you in a second is you can download the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. So if you download that utility, basically this is the utility when it opens up and this is what you would be using uh, in order to do the overclocking so if we, we open this up we can see it's at intel uh, or the system information and it gives us the basic system information here so uh i7 3.4 gigahertz it tells us our our, our memory uh you know 1600 megahertz so again when we're talking about 1600 megahertz, this is the speed of the memory. A lot of people, whenever they think of RAM or memory, they only think of size. 8 gigs, 16 gigs, 250 gigs. They don't think of speed for some reason, right? And so just like anything in a computer, what's going to make your computer run faster is in, in fact how fast the information can go into and out of any single component. So the 1600 megahertz is how fast uh, information can be transmitted into and out of the RAM itself. So when we're talking about uh, overclocking RAM, this is what we would be doing. We'd be increasing the speed of the RAM. So it's not the size, it's still, whatever this is, eight gig or 16 gigs, it's still 16 gigs of RAM, but it's 16 gigs, if we overclock it, of faster RAM. 
But again, as I say, that this particular computer uh, doesn't support overclocking. And to be honest with you, um, if it wasn't for you guys asking me to do an overclocking video, I, I wouldn't really care. <laughs> so I don't have any computers around here I can overclock. But if we were going to overclock, and we did have a system that we could in fact overclock, what we'd want to do here is go down to manual tuning. And this is all grayed out because my system doesn't allow me to do this. But here is where we would go in, and if you can see all these little things, this is where we would go in and try to tweak uh, the stuff so that um, so so that we would try to make it, it run faster. So this is the multipliers right here, and so we would try to increase these multipliers. So core one, core two, core three, core four. We would try to increase these multipliers to see how much faster this this RAM would run. Then we have power boost up here and a whole bunch of different things. Basically, as I say, this particular uh, computer, I can't actually do the overclocking, but this is where we would configure all of that if we could. So that's really all there is to it. Um, again, <laughs> it's like defragging. Yes, you can. Yes, it in fact does something. It's not completely worthless, but... It, 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 is it really worth the time and energy? I would argue in 2013, no. In 2003, yes. 2003 overclocking was, was, was awesome. It was a bee's knees. But come on, guys. It's been a decade. Um, I know a lot of people still like to do overclocking, but if you want to do overclocking yourself, again, you say, well, Eli, I want to overclock. I have a need for speed. That's cool, and that's fine, and basically, like I say, you just have to make sure your processor will support it, make sure your motherboard will support it. Uh, in order to do the overclocking, essentially what you'll have to do is you'll have to go onto Google and find out how to specifically do it with the motherboard you have and the processor you have. Again, this process has become more complicated over time, and every motherboard and every processor now, you need to make sure exactly how to do it. It's no longer as push a button as it used to be, but I would really argue against, again, you know, since I'm talking to you guys, hopefully you're going to be working in the enterprise environment, working in companies, dealing with, uh, you know, clients, I would really argue against ever doing overclocking for clients um, or, or users, because again, it just adds instability that I think is going to come back and bite you in the butt in the future. You know, if you overclock a, si a client system, and then a week after you overclock it, it starts futzing up and freaking out and crashing, they're going to expect you to come back for free and fix the problem. You get what I'm saying? I just, I just don't think it's really worth the time. So overclocking, all overclocking is, is again, Intel, AMD, they try to manufacture everything to a certain specification. The stuff that falls through the cracks that doesn't live up to that expect, expectation, they stamp with a different speed. Overclocking is simply trying to find how much faster than the advertised speed you can make that CPU or RAM function. In order to get that done, you have to have the motherboard, you have to have the proper CPU, you have to have the software, and then you just have to do a lot of Google searching. So, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This was Introduction to Overclocking. As always, I enjoyed this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.